While designing a title or a banner or a social media post, you might have found yourself wishing you had just a little bit more negative space. Maybe the sky extended, maybe the sand kind of keeps going to give you room to add extra title, text, elements, whatever it would be. Today I'm going to show you a trick of how you can extend any photo side without using Photoshop. So what we're going to take is a photo like this and learn how to extend the sky smoothly so that it looks like this. Let's get started. So as I mentioned, the trick I'm going to show you today is how you can extend the negative space on one of the sides or multiple sides of an image simply by using a background color and a gradient that goes from the same background color to transparent. And this will give us the illusion as if that same color or that side extends forever. And you can then extend as high as you want to give you a bunch of negative space. And in this case here with our Jeep photo, uh, it wasn't quite tall enough. We wanted to have a big vacuum, this kind of empty space in the top to really make the image itself stand out and to play with text. And I was able to use this trick to extend it. Now, as I said, this trick has a couple components. And specifically first is you'll see there's this gradient. So I've created this gradient, which I'm going to show you how to do so for free in, just in a little bit. But it goes from an opaque background blue that I chose from this photo to a transparent. So it's that slow gradient. Now the background image itself, all I did to get that was I went up to the eyedropper tool. Uh, you can Any way you can get a color from the image, do so. If you have Chrome, there's this great extension called eyedropper. It allows you to choose a color from anywhere on a web page. So I did that and I chose a nice blue close to the very edge of the photo. And that's what I used to create the gradient again, which I'll show you how to do in a second. So first I created the background color of that same blue. But you can see when I do that, at the very edges of these photos, you can see the line. Because the sky in this case actually changes a whole bunch. And it would be very difficult to try to match that exactly. So instead what we do is we create this one gradient and snap it on top. And as you can see, it covers the line without really ruining the effect of the sky and extends that entirely. So let's do this step by step on a different photo to show you how it would be done. So let's say, now this photo too, got a nice hand and it'd be really cool if the hand was just isolated on the left side and we had this type of pink go all the way across. This trick also works with going from a texture like this to a non-texture, so it'll be a flat background. If you had Photoshop, you could just duplicate or clone this background all across, but we're only gonna use Canva for this. So in this case here, we're gonna find a pink we're going to turn the background that pink and then we're going to create a gradient that's going to help us feather in between that background and the image to create one cohesive looking item. So to do so we'll go up to our eyedropper tool. We will pick the general pink we see there. Okay we got that now and here's our color. Now we'll go for the background of the space itself. We'll paste in that uh, kind of beige and there we have it. Now, you'll notice immediately, of course, it's fairly close, but there is that line. Clearly, there's a place where the photo stops. And now that's what we're going to fix. So we'll take that same color. We just took that, and now we need to create a gradient. A couple ways you can do this. If you have Canva Pro, what you can do is use the, there's a gradient element. If you go into the elements and you search gradient, one of the elements you'll notice transitions into uh, transparent. So if you click on that you'll see it goes from this kind of purple off to nothing. If we change this that would kind of get us what we want. And In fact you know we can uh, bring that here and get kind of a sense of how it will work for us. Uh, I think it's got some issues with uh, maybe being a little bit too late but we'll play with that. Right. So you can see how that helps transition into the that particular side. But if you don't, now in that case, you would bring it into the artboard, make it as big as you like, uh, and then proceed to download it as a transparent PNG. This is why you need Pro, because only Pro has the transparent PNG. Uh, you could stack it, the problem being that if you stack multiples of it, you're going to get a line at the top of it. Because as, as, as well as you will try to 
as much as you could try to line it up perfectly, generally speaking, there's going to be a bit of a gap or there's going to be kind of an overlap that'll be a little bit darker. So there'll be lines. So if you have Pro, great. You can try to work with this transparent gradient and put it out. Otherwise, I have this great free tool here called angrytools.com. So angrytools.com slash gradient slash image. Uh, angrytools.com, in fact, has a bunch of really kind of interesting images, image tools you can use. This particular one is for gradient. And this is what we'll use to create it. So what we'll do is get this set up how we want it. So we want it to be linear because we want it to go from opaque to transparent. Uh, we'd like it to current this on an angle and instead we want that to kind of go left to right or up to down, uh, depending on what you're doing. Of course, you can rotate it so it's not a big deal, but I uh, like the angle zero. So for us, it's going from left to right. Now we'll go into the colors and we will add it. So I'm now clicking into this little color. You can see the gradients going from blue to white. Here, I'm going to go into the color and I'm going to paste. Oops. Let's grab that one that we had picked from the top. So we're going to paste it. Now for this middle color too, we're going to paste it again. In fact, there it is for us. Now this is very important. Despite the fact that this white is going to be transparent, there's going to be some places in between before it goes fully transparent that it would start to go white. So we'll want to make sure even for what's going to be transparent, we make it that same color. The trick will be when, with this selected, we're going to make alpha go zero. So again, we went to angrytools.com slash gradient slash image. I'll link that in the video description. Uh, we then made sure the orientation was linear. So it's going to be going left to right. Now you can do the same thing with like up and down as well. Uh, and then angle so that it, you know, up or down, left or right. But again, you remember that you can scale and move things around in Canva, so not a big deal. And then for these three colors, from the color we chose from our photo, we came back and we're going to paste that into the three boxes. And important that all of them are done, except for one. On one of the sides, we make sure that it's alpha, or is how like is it see-through or not? We make sure that it is zero. So. With that done, we can now download. So the you'll see there's two, there's a download image and generate source. So we'll want the download image. You can see here too what's useful is its width and height. Think about the photo you're doing. I want to have as much as possible, I want to have one relatively thin 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 image, just so that's not too wide and it doesn't take up too much of the space here. So you can think about trying to apply a band-aid just between just on this line. You know, you know, we don't want it to bleed too much onto either side. So what that would mean is a fairly small width. So let's call that 100. And a fairly big height. Let's go 1,200. You know what? I'm going to make that even less wide. Okay, so 1,200 height. So that should cover our height nicely and not too wide, only 80 pixels. If you're doing it the opposite here for this one, you might want to say, you know, 1,900 wide by 100 tall. So just think about that, the actual position of it. But that prepares the image. So we go for download image, and now it's there ready for us. So that's downloaded to my local computer. Now we go back to our image. Here's what we want to fix. I'm going to click and drag it into the scene. It automatically downloads for us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it over top where I want, and just extend it a little bit outside so I don't miss anything. And I'm going to move it over just till it's almost touching. And there. You can see how everything almost just disappears. It's a bit noticeable, of course, because there is the texture to non-texture. But generally speaking now, what you have is we've extended this, seamlessly extended the background without any need for Photoshop. And now we have this entire right side to be able to place whatever text that we wanted. So we have this beautiful isolated hand. It has much space here on the right side. And fortunately now, like uh, you can move this however f far over you want and keep giving yourself more and more space on the right side. And the item becomes uh, keeps becoming more and more isolated. So really fun, really simple, no need for Photoshop or anything else. So let's do it one more time. And, and even cooler too is like, what if we took that same photo and tried to apply the same thing for the top and the bottom? Right, so extend it out. So really have the subjects of the photo isolated. So we have these two guys just sitting on a bit of stairwell with a bit of a gray. 
So let's go through the exact same practice. We're going to choose the eyedropper and pick a color really close to the edge. Now you see it varies quite a bit from there to there. We're not going to be too concerned about that. Well, let's choose yeah, someone here. So now we have our gray. From the photo, we were able to choose a gray close to the edge. Now we'll choose the background of the entire canvas and we'll paste in that new gray we had just gotten. So already you can see it kind of starts to disappear and that's good, but you can definitely see the edge and that's where the next step comes in. We still have the copy or the text copied. So what we're going to do is come back over here and now we're going to update the colors. So within this color here, we want to add the gray. So we'll come back in. So this is again angrytools.com slash gradient slash image. We are changing the three colors of the gradient. Three locations of the color, I should say. So it goes from the exact same color, but from opaque to transparent, to see through. And now the width and the height. So again, we're going to think about what we want to achieve here, where we want it to be uh, narrow, so not too long but uh, very long, or so very tall. In one case, actually, we want it wide, and then we also want it tall. So we might need to actually download two images for that. Uh, nope, actually, so it'll just be the one. So we want to go from, we want it to be very wide. That goes from dark to transparent. And then we would just take that same one and then rotate it. So let's do it width-wise. So we're going to go from, you know what, just to make that easier, we'll go 90 degrees, so it's opaque on the top to transparent on the bottom. We're going to make it super wide, so we're going to go 1200. And the height, we're going to make it narrow. I'll tell you what, we can go, i tell you what, 100 sounds good. Okay, so download image. And this might take a little bit, of, you, you can, as you can see, like if you want to play around with these, the angle and that, it's super simple to download a bunch of images, so it's not going to take that long if you want to get it just right. But I take that image and I'll just drag it right in. And we give it a second while it uploads. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that over here. Drag it down to about the better size. Now you have some flexibility with this one with the spacing because we can make it taller. And what you want to you want to be really careful to use the corners and not uh, sizing it left and right. Because if this crops anything, and if it crops it during the midst of the transition, it'll break the effect. So there we go, transition to that. Now if I copy and paste that, I'm gonna make it smaller so it's easier to work with, and then rotate it. And go 90 degrees, and hit it there on that side. There we have it. And the photo is seamlessly blending in with the background. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna around a little further. Yeah. And I said if you have some room to manipulate it to make it kind of fit in a bit more naturally, obviously feel free to do so. And now within this we have this entire negative space to add in any types of notes for our designs. So as you can see, with a few simple tricks within Canva and one excellent free tool online for creating a gradient, you can easily extend the background color of any photo to give you more space to work within to create some really unique, interesting, and beautiful designs. Cheers to your great looking work.